I'm so happy you're here. It's great to be with you again. And I want to share a pretty, pretty insightful insight. I guess all insights are insightful. But it's about, uh, about what I've come to see as our greatest superpower. The thing that gives us more empowerment than anything else in life. And I really want you to not flick or click on another video right now because this is important. And I think if you stay with me here, you're going to realize that maybe up to now you have not been aware of the importance of this superpower that you have. Because the problem is we generally look for empowerment in places it can't be found. The, the real obvious one is we look for it externally. We're looking for all sorts of solutions where we can't find them. And maybe that resonates with your lived experience. You know, trying this doesn't work. Try the next thing doesn't work. Or even when you do find it and it works, you realize quite quickly that, well, now it's on to the next thing. But there is something that really is empowering. And it's something that you're already doing. That's the good news. This superpower I'm talking about is the power of what you choose to focus on. That's it. Pretty simple. What do I choose to focus on? Because, you know, if you really sit down and give it some thought, there's a lot to this. It's like, well, what does my nervous system focus on all the time? What is all of our nervous systems? What do they all focus on? Safety. Preoccupied with it. It's fixated on it. That's not bad. That's just what it is. That's just its function. That's what it does. Now, the other thing too is we have this sense of self, this false identity the separated self that we very often find ourselves living from. And it's focused not so much on safety, but the past. This, this constructed identity is based entirely on what happened in the past, right? And it uh, projects a future based on all those uh, conclusions that it's drawn from the past. But the other type of focus is the focus that comes from who you are. From your authentic self. And the major aspect of that is it's tied in very closely with what you actually want. Your genuine desires and needs. So just ask yourself that question. How often has the focus been on what my nervous system determines or my false self? And how much of my focus, my, my intentional focus, has been going towards what it is that I truly want? Not what other people tell me I should want. Not what society tells me I should want. But from what it is that I genuinely want. How often have I been focused on that and that alone? Because we can't really switch focus. We can't spread focus. So if I'm not focused on that, I must be focused elsewhere. So we're all kind of doing that, right? We're having our attention and our focus drawn in directions that we actually don't even want. Now, the big thing for our, our focus is the obvious one is this false self. And it will focus on 
a very limited future, very narrow future, because it's of all the self-judgment and the self-abuse that it entails. It has an agenda for what's allowable to be focused on. And one of the things we do is we question the narratives. We question the beliefs. We question the thinking and the feelings that come from this false self. And that process called inquiry is really essential. But ultimately, it's less essential than focus. Because when I do inquiry and I find the truth, this false self is not based in reality. This is what I really want. This is the truth. I've done inquiry to, to harvest this truth or to uncover this truth. Now, which one am I going to focus on? The idea here, what I'm inviting you to think about is, I'm going to spend more of my time focusing on the truth. I'm going to use inquiry as a tool to occasionally go in and uncover the truth. But once it's uncovered, I've just discovered gold here. This is truth. And I'm going to focus on this truth. I'm going to remind myself of this truth. I'm going to construct my life so that I'm exposed to the truth. And this truth is reinforced over and over again. But primarily, the superpower is I am going to focus on it. I'm going to take ownership of my power to focus on this. So... We do exploration. We don't deny the false self. We look at it. We even go in to debunk it, really. But our whole lives aren't about the process of inquiry. It's an essential part. But what do I do with the truth that I discover in inquiry? That's where really predominantly I want to be focusing on the truth of who I am and how important that is because when we're living from that false self and all those limiting beliefs it's it's like self-abuse it really is and it's so overwhelming it's got all those intense emotions that seem to con confirm the narratives that it really draws attention. It wants focus. And that's your power. It's taking your power and it is cultivating and it's maintaining its own semen sense of existence through your focus on it. So the balancing act is don't deny it, go in to question it. But once I've questioned it, I start to remove power from it through focusing on the truth of who I am. The main, the, 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 one of the things I see that we do in our lives, our day to day lives, we're primarily focused on behavior, right? What is this behavior I'm doing? Look at that inappropriate behavior, and that's the appropriate thing. And well, I should do that, and I should use willpower and everything else to get that behavior to fall into line. But you know, what we very, we very rarely ask is, who is the person doing this behavior? It's a fundamental question to consider here. Who is it that's doing this? Right? Because if it's not questioned, it's typically this false self, this inadequate, guilty, shameful, fearful, vulnerable self that's doing the behavior. And if I'm focusing on the behavior, I haven't actually looked at there's an imply an implication to that. Well, I'm kind of I'm focusing on this because this is the one that's doing it. So when I'm talking about our superpower being our focus, it's to focus on less so on a, on behavior, but more on identity. Who am I? As I do all these various things and actions and behaviors, who's doing it? And your true self is not your separated self. It's not your false self. It doesn't even exist. It's, it's a story. It's a story of guilt, inadequacy, 
fear, resentment, anger, being alone, having to be fiercely, fiercely independent. That's not who you are. So can we start to see how important it's going to be to focus on the truth, especially if I'm going to look at the behaviors, right? Bringing more awareness and focus to the truth of the person that's doing all these things. True inquiry into the false self, we find the truth. And the truth is, perfectly okay. I'm perfectly okay. I'm perfectly innocent. I am fundamentally good. I am naturally peaceful. Naturally restful. Talented. Creative. Loving. That's just an expiration. Uh, dipping your toe in. Truth is how vast you are. Is It's vast. It's incredibly vast. It's not this little tiny finite thing. It's vast. This is your identity. It's not separated. It's not small. Now, if you focus on that, do you think it might help some of those behaviors fall into line? Now, as I'm saying this, you know what's happening is a separated self is saying, this is nonsense. Can't be that simple. In order to guarantee that its existence, seeming existence, goes on in perpetuity, it will undermine your focusing on the truth. When you say to yourself, I am a good person, I am worthy, I am abundant, I am naturally peaceful, I am safe. The false self won't like that. Because that's not its identity. It doesn't know that, it doesn't understand any of that. But you do have the ability to choose to focus on the truth of who you are. And if you continue to practice that, it is a practice, right? Just the same way, you know, in certain meditations, people try and focus on a candle burning, focusing their attention. It's like, I can practice focusing on the truth of who I am. The truth of who I am will get my attention. Periodically, we go in here to the false self, but only for the purposes of debunking it. I look at it, and I bring out another gem of truth about who I really am, and then I'm going to focus there. So the invitation, again, in your practice is to focus on the truth. Yeah, but I don't really feel that it's true, said the separated self. That's not you. It doesn't feel like it's true. But all its stories are based on the past. And by the way, a very, very highly edited version of the past Highly edited, questionable, highly questionable, whether a lot of these memories and evidence that it presents even happened at all, but certainly highly edited to exclude anything that would question its narrative of something's wrong with me. Now, we can focus on that. 
we can not question, but focus, focus, focus. And what do we get? Fear, doubt, indecision, resentment. That's what we get from it. All the attention is drained from you into this, all the energy into this. So there is a way to empower yourself. What am I going to focus on? You know, I um, my book on procrastination talks about this. It talks about the true narrative of who you are and a truly helpful way for instance, in the aspect of your life of productivity, to come up with the truth of it. Ease. Guilt-free play. Those types of narratives. Those are conducive to who you are. The false self is all about push yourself. Feel guilty. Be attached to the outcomes. Right. This is the false self. This is egoic. This is ego. The thought system of ego creates the separated self. One of the things in the book I mentioned is that we keep rehearsing the truth. We keep focusing on it. Because in that book, and there's nothing wrong with these, techniques, you can come up with all sorts of techniques in order to help your productivity or to relationship techniques, communication techniques, um, practicing yoga, going to the gym, all these different things. That's all fine. But if I'm not going to focus, if I'm going to focus primarily on techniques and behavior, and I'm not going to focus on the truth of who I am and a more life affirming philosophy or ideas, my attention is going to go back to this old way of thinking about things, this old self defeating, self abusing narrative. So I keep telling people you must practice focusing on the truth practice 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 so that could be when you wake up in the morning it could be before you go to bed at night you keep feeding more and more of your attention and your energy and your focus into the truth of who you are now please hear that because people generally tend to and I understand why because they're helpful they look at the techniques and the behaviors and the strategies but forget to focus on the truth of who I am Right, and the, the helpful thoughts and the ideas that go around techniques. So we we set that up. The goal is that we have that as our strategy, as our practice. What am I going to focus on? I'm going to rehearse. I'm going to look over. I'm going to keep focusing on the truth of who I am. A new way to relate to myself. Something that's affirming, something that's conducive to life. One of the questions, guys, is have I suffered enough yet? Because the beautiful thing about what I'm talking about here is it's nothing new. We're already masters at this, at focusing. We just weren't aware up to now of the power that I hold through my focus. So we focus on the narratives of this, the, the past, of the false self, all the egoic ideas that support it. Focus there all the time. Primarily what you're going to feel is guilt and shame and inadequacy. No self-empowerment. But your mind is this incredibly powerful thing. Your mind is what chooses where it's going to focus. That's what the mind is. It chooses where focus goes. It chooses what will I identify with. Am I this or am I that? That's what the mind is. It's the activating agent of change. And when it chooses to focus on something, energy starts to get activated in that thing that you focus on. That's how all this energy is drained from you into this false self and why it feels so real. It's because there's so much energy of attention and focus driven into it all the time. You can start to reclaim this energy for yourself it's your birthright.
in order for you to be courageous in your life, you need to be encouraged. And that is true looking at the truth of who you are. It's, it's, it gives you so much energy. You feel it in your body. When you start to focus on this again and again and again habitually, you start to notice energetic changes take place in your body. Again, this is not about repressing any feelings or anything that comes up from here that you repress it and deny it. It's, it's actually the opposite of that. It's you completely allow this to be what it is. But you start to see it as, but what does it have to do with me, really? It's because you've actually disidentified from it, you're no longer trying to control it. You're not repressing it. You're not fighting it. You're not resenting it. You're just seeing for it for what it is, which is a false self full of false ideas and false concepts and past questionable memories at best, right? That has been given life through usurpation of my mind and my energy. It's not real. So it doesn't need to be destroyed or conquered or something. It's there. I see it for what it is. So it's not like we don't choose to focus on this by destroying this or getting rid of it because that would be to make it real. It's, it's there. However, I'm going to focus here and just watch the energy come back to where it's supposed to be and this falls away. That's how powerful your focus is. So when it comes, like, let's bring this back to the practical, right? I need to struggle and I need to be more productive and I'm failing. What's the truth? I'm perfectly okay. I'm naturally productive. I'm enthusiastic. I want to create. I want to have life. I want to have fun. You can't have fun. You haven't earned fun. Fun is important. Fun is unconditional in my life. It's a central part of my life. You can't have fun until you've worked hard enough. I have unconditional free play, guilt-free, and it helps me work. Right? Which one are you going to focus on? Which one are you going to practice focusing on? Which one works? Which one feels more life affirming? You have power. You're more powerful than you know. So, where do we begin? We begin from where we are. So if I'm 99% of the time focused on this, well, my first step is to make it 98. 2% of my focus goes here. And with practice and diligence given to your superpower, using your superpower, you'll start to see that that balance starts to shift. So do we do this for four hours a day, focus near at the beginning when we're always focusing on this? No, we start with a couple of minutes when we wake up. We start with a couple of minutes before we go to sleep. Maybe we pepper it in throughout the day. And we, 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 we develop trust in this because we realize, oh my God, this works. The more I focus on this, the more it becomes a lived truth in my life. So that's the invitation. Keep focusing there. And I want you to bookmark this video because this is true. This works. So let's keep coming back to this. I've said this years ago in, in, in my book and it's, I know now that it's more true than when I wrote that in the book. You focus on who you are, the truth of who you are. And then the behaviors become so much easier and so much better. The strategies, 
and the techniques all fall into place so much easier. To be honest, the strategies and the behavior and, uh, the, and the techniques work anyway. It's just that they can, it's much harder for them to work if we haven't, if our focus isn't really on who am I as I do them. So we keep focusing there. It's self-affirming. It's affirming your true identity. Identify with your true personality, who you really are. And watch what happens. And start easy, right? Start easy with this. And you'll find, guys, it'll work miracles in your life. So I hope that's useful. And I hope you keep that in mind. And uh, I hope you start to take ownership of that for yourself. And uh, if you like this video, uh, maybe share it with someone that you think might benefit from it. And uh, as always, I am so grateful that you're here. And if you've watched this far, it must really mean that you want to start focusing on the truth of who you are. So take care and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.